everything. We love those hair care products. <laughs> uh huh. So hi, it is another Monday, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. Um, it is almost the end of the month as well, which is kind of crazy, right? And we are just moving along in 2021, and I'm really excited that you could join me here this morning. Good morning to everybody on Facebook. Um, I know you had a choice, and I'm glad that you made the choice to come on and join me this morning early, because you know what? We have a choice all the time, and um, we can decide to get up and rise and shine, or we can get up and rise and whine. So I know that for you guys, it is about shining and, and really, I think, doing whatever we can to put our best foot forward, even if we're not really sure what that looks like, uh, we're willing to figure it out. And I'm committed to supporting you, and I love that we do this every week. Um, so, you know, my mission is to help people experience transformation. And for, um, for me to be a, a catalyst or a part of a conversation that opens you up to opportunity and possibility. And so Monday Morning Mojo is our time every week to come up with some thoughts that can really either guide us through the week or maybe even be journal prompts. Um, and so I trust you're gonna get what you need out of this session. I know I get what I need out of this session too. Um, and so I just you know, wanna say that by, by working with people, I grow and level up too as a coach. So it's really exciting. Um, and so I think what we're gonna talk about today in essence is change. And um, when we think about all the goals that we have for ourselves professionally, personally, financially, in our relationships, um, we have to know that in order to have the things we want, we must be willing to change. And yet change isn't easy for a lot of people. And um, it is sometimes wrapped up in a little fear. So we'll probably talk a little bit about fear today. Um, but I think that, you know, for us to understand on a deep level that change and transformation is really how we continue to grow and, and get closer to the things we say we want. So when you, when you really sit out on this mission of transformation, um, I want you to think about the things that you're going to call into your life, not just the things that you're going to let go of. And so what are some of the things, and if you want to even jot them down, I know a lot of you uh, take notes during the Mojo session. What are some of the things that you really want more of in 2021? What are you looking to call into your life? And, and realize that it's about attracting those things into your life. But in order to do that, you have to know what you want first. So let's, let's dig into that. Um, and I, I want to give you a challenge today. So if you're up for the challenge, jot this down. I want you to become unapologetically courageous. Unapologetically bold. To pursue the things that you really want. And, you know, I think, I, I don't think many of us lack ambition. We have desire, yet are we really stepping into courage and looking at how we can get closer to the things that, that we want? And, you know, we can set all the goals. We can set all the action plans. Um, you can set your schedule to have the right activities on it. You might even hire a coach. Uh, you might go to lots of training different webinars and trainings or read books. But at the end of the day, the outer game that you're looking to have and play in starts right here. It's an inner game first. It's about the mindset first. So our call to action today is to be unapologetically courageous. And I say unapologetic because some of us hold ourselves back. Some of us will hold ourselves back and not want to step out in boldness, not want to declare the things that we really want. We worry about what other people will think. How many of you fear some judgment if you were to be honest with yourselves? And, and you wonder if your friends and peers and partners will look at you and say, wait, you want to do what? Can you do that? Do you have what it takes to do that? Now, not that they say that to you directly, but it's what you think you hear. You think you're hearing people say, uh, can you do that? You think that people will judge you and doubt your ability to think big and to think bold, right? Who are you to, you know, start a new business? Who are you to level up the business you already have? Who are you to write a book? 
who are you to get on Facebook every Monday and talk to people? Who cares what you have to say? So, you know, it's that little voice in our head that tries to tell us what, what we should or shouldn't do. But here's what I want you to understand about that little voice. Don't be so mad at it. That little voice is, is doing what it thinks it has to do to protect you. It's doing what it thinks it has to do to keep you from feeling uh, exposed or vulnerable. And, and I think with the push through that, and that's why I say be unapologetically courageous, to push through that and to understand that that vision that you have, that calling on your heart is there for a reason. If it's not, if it didn't belong to you, you wouldn't have those thoughts. It's been given to you for a reason. So it's up to you to decide if you want to pursue that or not, because you get to direct, you get to really, before even that, write the manuscript of your own life. You get to make the choices. So I think that today we're going to talk about, you know, what does it take to really create transformation? How do we work through some of the thoughts, some of the feelings? How do we get one foot off the brake? right? Have you ever tried to drive a car with one foot on the brake and one foot on the gas? Doesn't feel right. Have you ever been in a car with someone trying to do that? It's a bumpy ride. Yet, are we trying to navigate our lives that way with one foot on the brake and the other on the gas? So how do we release the brake so that we can move forward? And so that's, that's my uh, mission for you this morning. So how many of you can say, yeah, this, this resonates with me. I hear you. Put in the chat if you're on Facebook. Tell me on Zoom. Just put in the chat and say, I, I'm with you. I hear you. Um, so if we have these desires and we really want these goals, why is it so hard for us to change? Again, put it in on Facebook or in the chat or tell me here on Zoom if you want to come off mute. Why do you think it's so hard for people to implement change when we know that in order to have what we want, we have to go from where we are and we have to move forward. But why is it so hard? Michelle, I see your hand up. Yeah, I think it's, I, I think the biggest one is fear of failure. And yeah. if people are saying, what, you can't do that, or you think you can do that, and then you fail, right? You're, they're just confirming what they're saying out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's fear. What is the fear of? It could be fear of failure. Yeah. Uh, for some people, it could be something else. So let's just dive into that for a second and talk about fear. Um, what is fear, right? I love the acronym for fear, right? This down, I'm sure you've heard it a million times. It's false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. Because most of the time, um, what is fear? It's usually rooted in two, one of two thoughts. Um, it's either uh, a fear or a belief. Let me, let me even go further. It's a belief created in our own minds that you won't get what you desire or want. It's either a thought in our own mind that we won't get what we want or we will lose what we already have. Think about that. So in my career as a coach, I've, I've coached people who are looking to level up and then find that you know, no matter the, the, the depth of their desire, they're still not moving their business forward. They're not breaking through to that next level. Why? There's some fear around it. And for some people, it was fear of what life would look like at a higher level of production, right? Um, some people have a fear that they may not have time for their family or their relationships will suffer or that they break through and it can't be sustained. And then people will see that they went, you know, they brought their business forward and for only, only for it to come back down. Right, we can put in a, a dozen different different things in, in that statement. So fear is is really it's 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 a belief that we hold on to. It's false evidence appearing real, and it's usually rooted around the fact that we think that we're going to lose something we already have, or that what we want can't be ours. Jill, did you want to say something? I I thought perhaps it was tied to safety in the sense of danger. Um, you know, if it's an unknown and you want it bad enough, but it's a scary place kind of thing, sure. you know, so that might inhibit sort of the next progression. Sure. And when you really break that down and unpack that, that is fear of either not having what you desire, right? Because you're going into the unknowns. So you have this, this vision of what you want or a goal around what you want. 
and, and you're fearful of going into the unknown and maybe not getting what you thought you wanted, or it could be going forward into the unknown and leaving something behind or seeing that something might change. So you're right. And again, it's based in either of those two, two beliefs. Right. So, so we have to really look at and examine what are those thoughts in our own mind? What are the things that we hold on to that false evidence that appears real to us that may paralyze us and keep us back from moving forward on our goals? And so again, that's why I say it's time to be courageous. Now, it may be that you need someone to help you work through that. Um, I can give you guys a journal uh, prompt, something that if you want to write down a question that you might want to journal on. Um, and so let's say we want to look at some of the goals we've set for 2021. Okay. So whether they're professional or personal, choose one goal and ask yourself, what is it I fear? Or what do I fear if I hit this goal? What do I think might happen? And you're going to have to peel the onion back a little bit, as I like to say, because you, you may on a surface level say, I don't fear anything. I, I want this. But let's get real and ask ourselves again, what do I really fear will happen if I hit this goal? And then when you get to that, I want you to ask yourself, is this fear serving me? Because sometimes we do have these feelings and emotions and fears, and we think that it's protecting us, as Jill uh, talked about too, yet, is it really holding us back from the life that we want? Is it only honestly another form of some self-sabotage? And is it really serving you? So when we slow down and look at that, I think we'll reveal some of the programming, right? And we've talked about this on Mojo. And if any of you want to dig deeper into this, reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk to you one-on-one -on, -one on it anytime. Um, you can always schedule a free little discovery session with me. Um, so if you really dig into this and you really start to pull it apart, you realize the programming, right? The unconscious programming that we're living under. And, and that's because everything that we believe really shapes our thoughts. Our thoughts become the things that we say and do. And of course, that's what brings results, right? And so as we see results, whatever that might be, it's programming us, right? If I do this, I get that. So it programs us to say, I'm gonna continue doing this so that I get that. So even when we are holding ourselves back, ultimately, we've, we've convinced ourselves or proven to ourselves through this programming that there was some value to that, right? There's a reason why we feel these conditions on our thinking. I wanna encourage you to let go of some of those, those conditions that hold you back. I wanna give you an opportunity to really work through some of these thoughts and feelings so that you can move confidently in the direction of your dreams. That is not an anecdote. You know, you've heard that one before. Because here's the thing, guys, our greatest desires will always harbor our greatest fears. And the moment you get comfortable with that is the moment you start to understand how to unpack it, right? Because wrapped up in your greatest goals, in your greatest dreams and visions for your life, your business, all there with it, hanging out is your greatest fear too. So what, let's just get comfortable with it. Let's just admit it and figure out how to move past it, right? So it's an opportunity to slow down and really look at it. Um, because as soon as you set a goal, you know fear sets in, right? all the conditions start coming up. Like, well, if I do this and I have to worry about that and I probably have to, you know, so it all starts rolling through your mind. Um, and we don't even realize it's happening. Sometimes it's very gradual and then suddenly we hit a brick wall and we're not where we thought we would be in the pursuit of our goals. So I wanted to have this conversation early in the year with you, not in June or, or October. Uh, I wanted to really like nip it in the bud. I wanted to know if I'm the only one who does that to herself, right? And, and, and yes, I do it to me too. Even though um, I have a lot of education and a lot of experience working through these things, I'm just as human as everyone else. See, having the thought itself is not the problem. It's how you respond to it that could be the challenge, right? 
So don't beat yourself up for having those doubts or fears. Understand that it's part of the process, but yet what will you do with it once you know it's there? Once you know that that fear is there, what is the next step? How will you overcome it, right? So on a mental level, I think it's about asking yourself questions and asking yourself, you know, why is this fear here? What is it here to show me? What is it here to do? To, how is it going to serve me, right? And so um, another thing that I think can get in our way of hitting our goals is procrastination. Should we go there? You know, honestly, procrastination has a lot of root causes, but a lot, most of the time, it's, it's also, I think, connected to fear. If you know what I'm talking about, tell me in the chat uh, that procrastination is, is something that you have to be very mindful of. You know, I think it's a bigger problem for some of us than others. I get that. Uh, but again, you know, when that shows up, you have to ask yourself, what is this trying to teach me right now? What is it that I'm really holding back on? Why do I say I want X and I'm not willing to do what it takes, right? So when you realize that you are avoiding something and you are putting it off, because that's really what procrastination is, it is, um, it's just avoidance, right? Uh, it's, a, it's really about mindfulness. That's what, I, what I'm talking about with you a lot is mindfulness. It's, it's really recognizing how to get out of autopilot and to take a moment and say, okay, what is happening at this moment? Why am I putting this off? Why am I delaying my, my success in this area if this is something I say I want? Now, sometimes it's, we procrastinate because we, just, we don't know what to do next, right? We need more information. Um, we might need some help. Maybe this is something new to us. So we have to, we have to know that we need some, some support or resources. Um, maybe we're procrastinating because we're fearful again, right? Um, maybe we're procrastinating because we haven't set ourselves up for success and we don't have the right environment tools or, or mindset. So I think procrastination um, is, is really understanding that there's an intention behind it, right? We intend to do something, but then we put up the, the wall and we have to work through the procrastination issues if we're going to have what we want. And, and sometimes I think it's about getting clear about the fact that we're worthy and deserving of what it is we say we want to accomplish. So, so let's, let's just throw that out there. You deserve success. You deserve an abundant life. So for some of us, there's this sense of, of self-worth wrapped up in our goals too, right? And we get, we get fearful, we fear judgment, we fear, you know, whether or not we can really do it, fear success, you know, and, and then we have the doubts around our ability. And so again, you are worth it. You deserve success. It is about understanding that you have amazing potential and it is so untapped. It is like the well that no one's digging. Right. So let's let's get into that. I see some heads nodding. So I'm, I'm am I preaching this morning? Does it feel like it's Sunday? So tell me again, how are you? You know, how are you relating to this? I can't be the only one. Tell me I'm not. So what are those feelings? Right. So that's why I say it's about being unapologetically courageous, confident. If you have the, the dream, if you have the desire, if you have set the goal, it belongs to you. So therefore, I believe universally, you have the ability to get there. You might need some help. You might need some, some more education, some resources, some tools, whatever it is, right? Because we don't know it all and that's okay. We talked about, we're not here to strive for perfection. We're here to strive for progress. And so I, I wanna encourage you to step out into your courage and know that you have the ability to figure it out. Because the things that limit and challenge you are your greatest aspirations. The things that you lose sleep over is right here waiting for you to have in your life. It's just right there. You just have to start making that effort towards walking towards it. So I think it's about knowing that the challenge itself is what helps us become the person we need to be to achieve success. 
I mean, think about it. If there was never any challenge in your life, how would you grow? If you never had the opportunity to step out into something new, how would you learn? Right? So those things that are challenging you are truly your growth opportunities. And so when we spend a lot of time and energy thinking that we are not capable and, and you know, like that whole thing around the imposter syndrome, that is self-inflected. We, we are telling ourselves we're an imposter. It's not the world who thinks we're an imposter. We, we are, that is self-inflicted because we think that we're not the person who can accomplish this. And my friends, you are. You just, you, you are. And how will you know if you don't really put yourself into the activities that will get you there, right? So this whole concept that we don't have what it takes, this time and energy that we waste on the imposter syndrome um, is really, it's not about how the world perceives you. It's how you're perceiving yourself. Because if you were to take a poll of, of how people see you in the world, like th those people that you're closest to, I think you would be amazed. Because they see you as confident, they see you as accomplished, they see you as someone who has what it takes. If you shared your deepest goals and desires with people, I think you'd find people lining up to encourage you. Not to tell you that this is crazy. And you know what? If you found that one person who says it to you, that's okay. Because it's really more about them reflecting their own fear on you. I can remember... I don't even know now, 10 years ago, I guess it's been at least 10 years. I, I left my full-time job to start my own business as a coach. And I remember telling someone in the business world that I respected, and she's very energetic and bubbly. And I was expecting, uh, you know, like, go girl. And I got this weird look back. She's like confused. And she said, wait, people are going to do what? They're going to actually hire you to do that and pay you? And I thought for a minute, like, huh? And I realized it's not about her doubting my ability. It, it was some fear in her own mind. It was some confusion in her own mind. And, and that's okay. That's okay. It's, you know, how do you identify yourself? And how do you come out into the world showing up with the ability that you already have? It's connecting with what you already have. Um, and again, I think the challenges that we face are just an invitation to grow. Write that down. The challenges I face are just an invitation for me to grow. To grow in power, to grow in knowledge, to grow in capacity, capability. That's really the opportunity. You know, Joseph Campbell, right? The quote, the famous quote by Joseph Campbell, um, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. The cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Look guys, a big part of my story for a long time was that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't smart enough. I never graduated college. I wasn't resourceful enough. That was a lie. I wasn't enough in any way, shape or form. That was something that was programmed into me. I, my first marriage was abusive. Uh, and so I carried that baggage and emotional baggage with me for a very long time. And I realized it was just a story. It was just a story I was telling myself. It wasn't true. But as long as I stayed stuck in that, it became my truth. Two different things. The story itself wasn't true. But because I chose to, to accept it as a reality, it became my truth until I rewrote the story. Until I did the work to see myself in a, in a very different way and to step out more courageously at times in bolder ways uh, until I accepted who I am and the things that really set my soul on fire and really got clear about what I think is my mission and purpose in life. Uh, and this Monday morning mojo is one way I fulfill that mission and purpose, right? What is your mission and purpose? How will you do the same? How will you start to rewrite the story, right? Because that's really all it is. These thoughts that we have in our, the inner game I talked about a minute ago, it's the story we tell ourselves. 
And if you're rereading the same story, you're not moving forward. So turn the page and start a new story today. What is the new story you can tell yourself? And I understand that this seems simple, but it may not be easy for a lot of you. And, you know, maybe being here on Monday Morning Mojo is one of the ways that it helps you. Um, but, you know, it's really important to recognize what you need to move forward or who you need in order to move forward, right? So that you can start putting those steps in there. When you face fear and you realize that the goal is not to remove fear from your life, by the way, that's gonna happen. And I'm gonna tell you this, guys, if you are really, really focused on playing it big, if you wanna hit big goals, and if you want to really start living life out loud on any level, fear is going to show up. Every single time you want to level up, fear is going to wave its hand at you. So it's not about removing fear. The most successful people are not, it's not that fear is absent from their thoughts or their life. The difference is they face the fear. They become a little bit friendly with it and they, and they talk to it and they say, okay, why are you here? What are you trying to show me? How do we work through this together and get on the other side of it so we can keep going forward? That is the goal. So if anyone tells you it's about living a life with no fear, I call fear is going to show up. It's what you do. It's how you respond to the fear that makes all the difference. So I want to hear from you guys. I know I'm starting to feel like I'm yelling at you. I'm a little revved up today uh, because I'm really passionate about this because I think that the average, um, no, I can't even finish my sentence because you're not average. I think that so many people just hold themselves back and there's this conflict within them because they have these dreams, they have these goals, they want more, they want opportunity, they want bigger, they feel like it's right there. And then they keep themselves back from it. They hold themselves back. They allow the fear to get bigger and more real in their own head. And, and so, you know, there's a chance that you get to the end of your life with regret or that you get to the end of the life. There, I don't know who had this quote, but somebody said, you know, do you want to get to the end of your life and still have music inside of you, right? So, so I'm passionate about this because whatever it is that you say you want to accomplish, let's just figure out how to start making that happen. And so I want to end with, and I'll give you guys a chance to, to tell me what you're thinking or if you have any questions, but I want to end with, a, with the um, quote. It's a long quote. I don't think we would call it a poem, but it's a quote from Marianne Williamson. Um, our deepest fear. And I'm sure you've heard it before. It's something that I um, have hanging in my office at home. And uh, it, it means a lot to me. And I usually can't read it without getting choked up. But the whole, the whole um, quote is going to be on the Facebook page in about 10 minutes. It's scheduled to be there. Um, and it starts with our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We didn't even talk about that today, but we will. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. I... I'm just curious what you're thinking. If anyone has anything they want to say, thank you. I see a little heart. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I love you guys. So um, any, any thoughts or questions on that? Or is it just like we end right there? <laughs>
I like that poem. Uh, who said it again? Marianne Williamson, Our Deepest Fear. She wrote that after reading, um, it's in her book, A Return to Love, which is a great read. Uh, so, so Marianne read A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is a really pretty big book um, that has its own story that I can't get into right now, but the, the authors, um, well, I'll just tell you briefly, the authors were scientists, atheists, uh, and they were doing this, this really um, incredible research project where they were working incredibly long hours. And I believe the woman started having these dreams and epiphanies that um, then when she talked to her partner, he said he was having the same ones. And wow. it, it brought them to, to a spiritual awakening. And so they wrote the book, A Course in Miracles. And it's all about spirituality and the divine and God. And it was, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing book if you can get through it. So anyway, she read the book and Marianne wrote A Return to Love. It's kind of like her take on that book. Mm -hmm. um, and so that poem is in, is in the book and it'll be on the Facebook group. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I like another poem from Amy Matthews. It's called um, Believe in Yourself. Love it. Well, if you want to share it on the Facebook group, we, I'd love for you guys to do that. You know, that group is there. It's designed to be a community for you. So, you know, it's a, it's a way to supplement and add more content and value in between all these Monday morning sessions. So. Okay, I will. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Anybody want any, to have anything to say before we sign off and, and go on to our day? I'm wondering what your takeaway is from this morning. Hopefully I've inspired you to call, to call some action in your life, Michelle. Yeah, it's uh, my husband and I were talking about something similar last night about this whole, he's working on something and, and he said exactly that to me, like the only way for me to have accomplished this, he just hit a big milestone and something was to face the fear that I could lose it all, right? I could lose what it is that I'm trying to do. It's really interesting. And in, in furtherance of that, I had a conversation with Nicole this morning, my daughter, for those who don't know. And the one thing that I said to her, I think ties into this is your self-talk, right? I said to her, you need to talk to yourself like you're your own best friend. Stop talking to yourself like you're you're, you're not all these things that you could be. And I think that kind of ties right into all of this, this, yeah. this courage. But if you don't talk to yourself the right way, um, exactly what you're saying, you are worthy, you are capable, you have all this inside of you. Yes. Yeah. And so I see, um, like we, I see a couple of questions in the chat around, um, uh, toxic people in our lives, whether they're friends or family members, uh, I see there's a question about, you know, is procrastination the symptom of something else? It most certainly is. Like I was saying earlier, mm -hmm. um, you know, procrastination shows up because of other thoughts that we're having uh, or fears. And um, at the end of the day, what we're talking about could kind of be packed up under the topic of self-sabotage. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm actually going to be working on, um, I am working on a four-week uh, coaching session that I'll put out to you guys on the, on the group. Uh, if you'd like to, to, you know, look at that and we're going to talk about how self-sabotage, even though we don't intend it is, is there and how it holds us back from having the things we say we want. So, yeah, Sarah, good morning. I see you have a question. You're muted, Sarah. There we go. Yeah, I, I just, uh, um, all this resonates with me a lot. Um, uh, not least of all, because I grew up in a family where I was just criticized and criticized and criticized and criticized. And so those hooks, if I let them, can still be there. Yes, because it's programming. And thank you for yeah. saying, you know, for, for sharing that, because that's, you know, a vulnerable statement to make. And it's, it's not something that we don't all understand on some level, right? And it's programming. So it's about how do we unprogram, how do we reprogram our thoughts? in a different way, right? So we've all heard the term neuroplasticity. Our brains are amazing, amazing. They have amazing capacity. We can redirect our thoughts, actually create new passageways to, to thoughts that will really move us forward in our life and create a whole different um, uh, level of programming. 
So I trust you got what you needed this morning. Somebody needed to hear something in this message. And so I'm going to invite you to take a couple minutes if you can. Uh, so because I know we live very busy lives and, you know, we tend to stop one thing and jump right into the next. Um, if, if you're here, you're here for a reason and you want this content to really start to create transformation in your life. So I'm going to invite you to take five minutes right now. And after every session on a Monday morning, just go back through your notes and, and circle the one thing or highlight the one thing you heard that you know you have to do some work on. Um, all of these um, sessions are recorded. You can find them on the Facebook group but you can also find them on my YouTube channel. I have every single session there. So if you ever wanna go back and, and review some thoughts, um, I've done as, the best I can to describe what each session is so you can go through and figure out what you wanna watch. Certainly feel free to share those videos with anyone that you think would benefit from hearing it. And again, if you feel like this is really making a change in your life, um, that's the biggest compliment I could ever hear. But um, if you feel like this is, really you know, helping you and uh, you can share this with other people, please invite them to the Facebook group. Invite them to join us here on a Monday morning, whether it's on Zoom or on Facebook. Um, I appreciate your help in growing the community because I think together we can all um, grow from that and support each other. And um, I'm looking forward to you know, seeing and hearing from you and, and looking at the transformation as it occurs in your life. So again, thank you for being a blessing to me. Thank you for being here and uh, you guys have a great day and a really amazing week. And I will see you back here on Monday morning. Keep up the good work, Anna. Oh, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, you guys have a great day. Enjoy. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.